Ladies and gentlemen, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, actually, I'm not a, I'm a doctor, but I don't treat patients. So I'm one of these PhD doctors. Um, and even worse, we don't treat osteoporosis. We uh, work with dental implants. But of course, the question arises if Osteoporosis is a problem in implant dentistry. Let me start um, like a good clinician to start with one case. You see a patient, his name is Reinhard, you see, yeah, Reinhard, uh, with uh, obviously tooth loss. And then he receives an implant and the crown. Uh, and this patient is me, so it's my case. The question is now, uh, how is this implant also integrated? And why are tooth loss occurs? And is there a correlation with osteoporosis? The question is, actually, we don't know. I can give you five studies showing yes, I can also give you five studies saying no. If we define osteoporosis based on the bone mineral density. But if it gets to the fractures, osteoporosis is considered a risk factor for tooth loss. Not severe, but at least an association. Now, what happens when we lose a tooth? A modern way of treatment is to place implants. And what you see here is a nice picture of a histology, where we put implants in a peak. But in reality, uh, you have to look inside the threads of the implant. You see, this is the implant surface, and this is five days after insertion of the implant. So, actually quite an early time point. Maybe not surprising, you see osteoclasts removing these um, bone particles and after another five days at day 10 you can already, already appreciate some new bone formation on the surface of the implant. So it's quite impressive how fast this early phase of bone formation starts. Now apart from this bone formation, uh, we can also see uh, more bone formation five days later and a bridging of the old bone and the implant surface. So this process we call osseointegration and it works quite predictably. Now, what I think you have learned from these pictures is once you insert an implant into bone, the primary stability is important. So the mechanical stability. And this mechanical stability is, um, let's say, replaced by a so-called biologic stability as a consequence of bone regeneration. So the primary stability decreases, the mechanical stability and bone regeneration starts and gives the implant of bony support with new bone. Now, today's focus on how this process is controlled is uh, via the osteocytes. You know, this early resorption process is an observation, but we don't know, really know how it works. And one of the explanations is uh, very likely the rank uh, ligand the ligand produced in the osteocytes. We know since uh, 2011 that if we remove the rank ligand selectively in the osteocytes, we get more bone. So obviously it's the rank ligand in the osteocytes, and not in any other cell, that controls osteoclastogenesis in bone remodeling.
And what we have learned recently is when osteocytes are dying, so if osteocytes undergo apoptosis, this is the main signal for bone resorption. So dying osteocytes somehow cause bone resorption. And of course, if you insert an implant, you have to drill the bone. And this drilling makes a apoptotic osteocyte ring. And it's exactly this region that is resorbed uh, in the early phase of osteointegration. And another issue in implant dentistry is, apart from drilling, is how strong you insert the implant. So it's kind of the insertion torque. Um, and it's quite logic that if you have a very high insertion torque, somehow you injure the osteocytes, osteocytes are dying, and dying osteocytes cause bone resorption. So it's very important to understand that when you place an implant, you should be very careful to the bone. You should not, um, let's say, make an injury more than necessary. So this is today's knowledge uh, and also the basic for the design of new um, dental implants. Um, and, and actually we, we like to have this resorption uh, to a minimum and the formation to a maximum. Uh, I think it's a lovely picture by the way, it's a good quality histology, you uh, don't see that often with the <coughs> new bone formation and the osteoclasts. Actually, for the osteoporosis people, this is a picture that they are not used to see uh, because it's not remodeling. It's definitely not remodeling, it's regeneration. But this is what you like to see. This is uh, the osteons and these are the nice, uh, beautiful, uh, let's say, elements of bone remodeling. Just to remind you, when you place an implant, not only in the threads, but also here in this area adjacent to the implant, we have an ongoing remodeling process. And uh, you know that the osteoclasts dig a hole in the bone and then the osteoblasts somehow close this gap. Um, this is relevant in, in implant dentistry because uh, we see that fluorochrome labeling is quite intense six weeks after implant placement and it slows down over time 26 days a uh, weeks but it's ongoing mm -hmm. so the bone remodeling and the area around the implant never stops the bone likes to be renewed the bone likes to be let's say re rejuvenated stays young and another um, that's a typical characteristic uh, you all know is uh, the bone modeling, so the adaptation to functional load. And this is also relevant in implant dentistry. Uh, these are implants where uh, baboons were chewing on for around uh, 18 months. And you can somehow guess and uh, look this let's say, trabecular structure, it, it resembles a goth gothic cathedral. So um, it, it's a nice sign of uh, bone remodeling. At least this is what we think. Now, uh, let's come to osteoporosis. This is a, a picture quite uh, often shown in our bone society, the three ages of the women, with this typical uh, sign of osteoporosis. And I also like this young young girl uh, reminds me to my own girl, she's five years now, Lily, if you want to know the name. If you don't want to know the name, she's, I'll also tell you. No? And we have osteoporosis in the jaw. Mm -hmm. So it's a systemic disease, so it's not a big surprise that you also find osteoporosis in the jaw. This is a sheet model, a very old micro CT analysis, and you see this typical uh, signs of, of tissue, uh, let's say, weakening and, and lack of integrity. Uh, of course, we also have the, the cortical bone, and um, 
again, this typical osteoporotic uh, signs of uh, porosity of the cortex we, we see also in, the, in our sheep model. But the question is, does this really have an impact, a clinical relevance in implant dentistry? I mean, are women or men with osteoporosis are at risk uh, to lose their implants? And I will show you that this is not the case, but before that I will show you some mouse models. Because of course we also have these overectomized uh, red models to study uh, osteointegration. This is from our group. We, we put the implants in the tibia and then after a while we look how much bone forms. This is how it looks like in the histology. Imagine this is a red bone, so it's very small. Um, and uh, not surprisingly, after ovarectomy, you see uh, that compared in the cortex, and let's see, let, let's look here. The bone to implant context in the marrow, uh, so is the, the covering of the surface of the implant with bone, is decreasing in the osteoporosis group. So 100% is the shame operated group and it's a decrease and the same is true bone volume per tissue volume in the marrow. So not surprising you have less bone, you have less osteointegration. But what is the risk factor of osteoporosis? And uh, I just brought you one of the recent reviews in, from 2018 and actually it, it, it shows that there is no difference in implant survival rates between patients with and without osteoporosis. So it's good news for those who have implants and osteoporosis. But there is another issue that we are very concerned about and this is periimplantitis. Periimplantitis is around, depends, uh, around 10 to 20 percent of implants over time and it's terrible. No? You have these ugly osteoclasts removing all the bone. Unfortunately you don't find any bone formation. Uh, you have bleeding and, and this is a very serious issue. The question is, uh, is, there a, is osteoporosis a risk factor for periimplantitis? I don't want to guide you through the numbers, but the answer is no. So periimplantitis is independent <coughs> of osteoporosis. I don't know if this is good or bad news, but this is the data. What about pharmacologic therapy and osteointegration? Uh, we have done a, a small case series with, uh, with uh, teriparatide and, and uh, could show at least you know, a, a little a trend of an increase. Um, but of course this study was completely underpowered. But uh, let's conclude that if your patients get this therapy and they have implants, it's definitely not a disadvantage, it's more of an advantage at least. Uh, what about the anti-resorptive therapies? I just uh, named a few of them, the bisphosphonate and the uh, denosumab, uh, or antiplicant antagonist. And the funny thing is, when you drill a hole in a tibia and you give these anti-resorptive drugs to a rat, you get more bone formation. Look, this is the control without any drug. This is a, a kind of denosumab. OPG uh, uh, and, and here alendronat in two concentrations. You get more bone formation. So it's funny, no? So bisphosphonate and, and anti-resorptive therapies at least uh, don't hinder, they even support bone regeneration. And that's maybe one of the reasons why some uh, people think the coating of dental implants with bisphosphonates uh, increase implant stability. And this is funny, no? This goes up all others go down and, and we ask the autopsy, well, how can you explain this patient? And he said, it's maybe that the, the people who did the study have, have changed, uh, uh, you know, the, have, is, is, a, is an error in the protocols. Maybe it's true, but actually it's too late to ask because it died. Um, Bisphosphonates and implant loss is a big issue because uh, our dentists are very concerned uh, about this uh, but uh, in, in reality, the, the risk to have an implant failure is very low and is not much evidence that bisphosphonates are uh, somehow a risk factor for implant loss. So actually the evidence is, is very, very low. Uh, 
Then, of course, we have the, the big issue of osteonecrosis of the jaw. Uh, and, I mean, I think that not being a medical doctor, but I think when cases are very rare, it's not a big problem. And worldwide, worldwide, and osteonecrosis was first described in 2003, I guess. And this is from 2017. And we have eight cases, one case, two cases. And this is also all from non-controlled studies. So it's, it's just cases. Um, again, I think the osteonecrosis is not a, a big, is not of big concern in implant dentistry, according to the data. I, finally, I also like to show you uh, one of our mouse models. This is a sclerostin knockout mouse. You know, this sclerostin is produced by the osteocytes and blocks bone formation. So if we remove sclerostin from the from the uh, organ, we get more bone formation, like you see here. But even more interesting for us is the two cementum. So this layer here is the cementum. It's, we have more cement in the sclerostin knockout mice. Um, and this is this is of interest because um, a new antibody raised against uh, sclerostin recently was approved by the U.S. Uh, not in, in Europe so far, but at least in the US. So the, the likelihood that this antibody will have a beneficial effect uh, on the periodontal therapy, so in, in implant dentistry or in, in dentistry in general, is very likely. So I, I really hope that uh, uh, these people prescribing the antibody... It's, hmm? it's, um, it's already in Europe. Okay, it's not the proof that the chief, uh, there's a positive fermenter. Uh, positive. Ah, okay, you see. Yeah. The EMA, That's the yeah. European medical. Yeah. <coughs> so I, I hope that the, the people who describe uh, homosopsomab will work together with the dentists yeah. to see if this has a beneficial effect also for us. And not surprising, this this antibody will support the osseointegration integration of dental implants. So it's also good news for your implant patients. And this is also my, almost my last slide. And just to tell you how effective implant therapy could be. Hmm? I, where is the implant? One tooth has an implant, the other not. Actually, I don't see it. Uh, so it's, it, it, if it's well done, it, it's, it's a very effective therapy, even in the aesthetic zone. So this is already my summary. Uh, I think the evidence of osteoporosis and tooth loss is, is low. Um, I think the risk factor osteoporosis for implant loss uh, is no to low. It's not very much evidence. Perimplantitis, I think, is, is independent. I, I wrote low because there might be a small risk factor that comes up, but I'm not convinced. And osteonecrosis and osteoporosis, I think, is a, is a very low risk um, that should not lead to any let's say, uh, any alert. So I, I think what we could discuss is about the, uh, the, the lack of communication between the, the dentists and, and those people who describe anti-resortive therapy. So there's still a lot of uh, confusion. With this, I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Very interesting presentation. I have two questions. The uh, first question is, uh, in um, orthopedics and dermatologists, mm -hmm. in patients with uh, arthroplastic, after arthroplastic uh, um, development, stress shelving syndrome, very implant osteoporosis. How, mm -hmm. how many people case in your practice? This very implantic osteoporosis uh, used. Actually, there, there is no single case in the dental implants. It, it might be different in, in the spine or for the osteo or for the orthopedic, but it's not is not an issue in implant dentistry. Uh, thank you. And the uh, next question um, in. Uh, uh, a 
paleogenetics uh, uh, generalized uh, periodontology, periodontitis, mm -hmm. the major role microbiome, yes, microorganism. Yeah. What role microbiome and microorganism in uh, uh, case with your patients? Yeah, actually I have no patients, I, uh, but I, of course I know the, the, the clinic a bit. Uh, we have a problem. There were some, we call them oral pathogens. Porphyromonas gingivalis, Tenarella forsythia, and Treponema denticula. So these are the bad guys. When usually patients with periodontitis, you find this patient, you find this bacteria in these pockets. The problem is, you can also find this bacteria in patients with no periodontitis. So it's not the whole explanation. Somehow they trigger the process, but patients who have this bacteria can have periodontitis or not. So it's more complex than we think. Unfortunately, the pathogenesis of periodontitis is only partially understood. Surprisingly. And, and the uh, last question, uh, how frequency uh, you can see osteonecrosis uh, in your patients. Yeah, <laughs> um, actually it's a rare event in general. So the osteonecrosis, of course in the tumor therapy, is high. No? Yeah. But in, in, the, in the osteoporosis, is, you, know, you get the statistics 1 to 10,000, 1 to 1,000, 1 to 100,000, so it's a, it's, a rare, it's a rare event. But with phosphonates, yes, with bisphosphonates, it's a it's a rare event in osteoporosis, uh, and also with uh, with the denosal mark. A few cases are reported worldwide, so it's very rare, um, zero point zero five percent somehow. And the, the, if you ask a oral, uh, if you ask a maxillofacial surgeon in a big hospital. If this is a problem, they will say, yes, we have many cases. Of course, because this is the, is the hospital where they treat the osteonecrosis. Of course, they see all the cases from the whole country. But in general, I think uh, we have to be very relaxed and not to, uh, let's say, uh, it's a problem, but we, 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 the, 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 the dentists are very afraid. Yeah. Problem. Yeah. My guess. Sure. Um, just a, a comment on your question. Um, as a rheumatologist, I, I've actually I have produced three osteonecrosis with bisphosphonates in rheumatology patients, but they were all taking cortisone, mm -hmm. um, which makes sense yeah. in any case. Yeah? But I have a question for Reinhard. Uh, when you say that osteoporosis has this low risk, and you relate only to bone density measurement, the definition of osteoporosis as we have it. What role, I have no idea, plays age, for example, for implant loss? That's good, yes. yes. Um, age is a risk factor. It's a very simple answer. I did not mention it. Age and smoking yeah. is risk factors, definitely. That, that will factor age. Age, uh, smoking, surprisingly not diabetes. And uh, and uh, women in postmenopausal period, early menopause. This is the yeah, no. biggest factor. Yeah, actually, the the, the studies. With this uh, activity and energy, yes. Yeah. Mm, actually, there is nothing known about that. So the, all the the epidemiologic studies don't distinguish between, uh, let's say, early and late osteoporosis and. And, and they don't even consider if these patients are under bisphosphonate therapy or another therapy or no therapy. So it, it's, the data are not so clear. Yeah. Thank you for the talk. I have two small questions. Uh, the first one, could you clarify, you showed the uh, influence of bisphosphonate for uh, implant survival, yeah? 
Uh, could you clarify uh, the bisphosphonate was prescribed only before uh, osteo integration or after that? I don't understand. Ah, I mean, I, no, no. Uh, it was not prescribed. It was on the surface. It was a coating. Uh, so they, they, mm -hmm. they, they put the, the dental implant in a bisphosphonate solution Resolution. and then they screwed it. They screwed mm -hmm. it in. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a lo it's a local treatment, not a systemic. Yeah. And another one. Uh, we have a great experience in experimental osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, with Professor Gerdu, Professor uh, Kovoroznyuk in our institute, and uh, we have a lot of data about histologic study and uh, BMD study in the red in different types of osteoporosis, glucocorticoid induced, post mm -hmm. and and uh, we also study the implant survival uh, in different parts of skeleton. Mm -hmm. uh, we put it in tibia, in hip, uh, in jaw, yes. and uh, I strongly believe that um, there are not correlation between the changes in bone volume and uh, bone loss progression in different bones. What do you see? Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. The, the red model is not <coughs> is not really uh, representing a, a, a real dental implant because um, one the, the, the oral cavity is unique yeah. the tibia has no oral cavity mm -hmm. uh, and we have to chew on the implants mechanical fine. yes ah, mechanical yeah. and so uh, of course this red model is has many 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 limitations but as a proof of principle to say, can, I don't know, PTH or any other drug improve also integration? It's a kind of... In general. In general, yes. No, no, but I, I'm, I'm completely realistic. But what is the alternative? Is a peak, a peak, no? Uh, and, and, you know, the chewing of the peak is different from, yeah. from us. Uh, we, can, we can theoretically use a dog. They also chew differently, and also I have visitors from the animal right activities at home, if I do that. So, is, we all have limitations. And, and in research is the mosaic, no? so we have the in vitro studies, we have the preclinical studies, and the clinical studies, and together they give a picture, not just one. Thank you, very nice presentation and very nice discussion. And one question, small please. I did not completely get the OPG or the Ranger here again. I mean, as I correctly understand, you used the sclerosteel in a heart model. It's a knockout mouse. So it's a mouse without any sclerosteel. Yes, yes. And I figure you used some analysis in a heart mice, and then this is about another crucial model. So, is the scientist's means, for example, not? Actually, not, because um, this this Rankin knockout mice and the OPG knockout mice they have already been published um, in 1997, 1998. So that's uh, I mean what we are now looking is on the role of osteocytes and how they can uh, affect the osteointegration of implants. But the problem with the osteocytes is it's not easy to make research. Mm -hmm. yeah, tricky. <laughs> Thank you. The next presentation. Uh